Cockroaches are among the most adaptable and resilient insects, and it's likely that more of them inhabit human environments today than in wild habitats ever before in history. Although there are roughly 4,600 cockroach species, only about 30 of these live in human habitats. And of those 30, only about five are considered major pest species. These five did not specifically evolve to infest human-made habitats, but were already somewhat adapted to them because of the similarities to their original environments. Global trade in the 1700s helped the roaches to spread worldwide, and heating systems became common in the late 1800s, allowing them to survive year-round in places that they normally couldn't inhabit. Roaches are ancient winged insects, and they're slightly younger than dragonflies, mayflies, and stoneflies in evolutionary history, but unlike those groups, they're not bound to aquatic habitats. Their real success comes from being generalist decomposers, capable of eating almost anything and surviving nearly anywhere. While this video will explore the nature of cockroach infestations in conjunction with our homes, it's not a guide to pest control. Rather, it's a look at the major industrial achievements of the past 200 years and how those have created a setting that mimics the cockroach's original habitat, allowing them to colonize the planet. Let's dive in. Number one, central heating and indoor plumbing from the late 1800s to the early 1900s. This mattered because all roaches that invade us require both consistent heat and usually consistent humidity, as their environments of origin are all in hot and mostly wet places. The five major pest species themselves actually inhabit five different kinds of niches indoors that best match their original habitat, save for the German and American cockroaches, which can infest basically any indoor environment. But all five species are cosmopolitan, meaning they've been introduced to every continent, save for Antarctica. But before indoor heating and plumbing, cold winters in Europe and North America limited the spread and survival of cockroaches. Heated plumbed buildings provided year-round warmth, humidity, and access to water, especially in kitchens and bathrooms. After this invention, they could now live permanently indoors, making every home and apartment sort of a microhabitat tropical refuge. It not only allowed them to live in the same place year-round, but also in cold places that they'd normally be unable to. And as a consequence, it made the roach actually obligate to its surrounding environment. If everyone in these cold places decided to not use indoor heating for a winter, even for just a month, the roach epidemic could be mitigated for a time. Number two, processed and packaged food in the mid 1800s to 1900s. This mattered because human food, once gone through an industrial process, becomes more accessible, portable, and storable exactly the conditions that roaches like to exploit. Bakeries, restaurants, and other household pantries are suddenly full of bread, flour, sugar, and crumbs, all well sealed, or at least well sealed enough to be preserved easily. Cockroaches can support multiple generations just on crumbs, as they can eat nearly anything organic. People leave food lying around a lot more often than they realize, and often the best way to deter cockroaches is to both sterilize and remove anything edible from the premises, as some pest species actually have a degree of social behavior, allowing the entire local population to capitalize on any food that's left out. The German cockroach is, has a particularly good sense of smell and is particularly social, and this has allowed it to become the worst cockroach pest species on the planet. Number three, steamships and rail transport in the 1700s and 1800s. This is pretty simple, and it's about the main way that cockroaches spread throughout the globe in the 1700s and 1800s. 
these new forms of industrial transportation allowed them to spread globally in cargo, luggage, and food shipments. But it wasn't the only cause, as cockroaches themselves are not exceptionally detrimental to the environment, meaning as invasive species, they're not actually that harmful to us or local ecosystems. They are basically decomposers on the periphery. They were simply able to explode in numbers because of their distinct lack of pickiness and specialization in what they eat and how they eat it. Human-made environments are not specialized by any other insects because our environments themselves are so chaotic or constantly shifting. They're also constantly maintained by the occupants, that is us. So all but the most abstract and sneaky generalist niches can capitalize. The population explosion was driven not by ecological aggression, but by a profound lack of pickiness, an adaptability in both diet and habitat unmatched among insects. This ecological world of hypergeneralization is the secret to the population boom and longevity of the cockroach. It shows that if a species specializes to thrive not in any one habitat, it can often be the first to thrive in radically new habitats. This is true of all invasive species, which more often than not tend to be quite generalized rather than specialized in niche. Specialization itself tends to work better in stable environments that have existed for a long time unchanged. Human environments aren't like this at all, so that's why the most generalist and sort of sneaky insect species, the cockroach, has been able to exploit human-made environments. Global trade in the past 100 years has actually exploded in terms of integration and just how much of it there is. This increasing complexity and consistency of travel routes has given the roach a unprecedented degree of free mobility between environments. Basically, as human industrialized trade expands, so too does the population of edge species which can capitalize. Edge species are species that live in ecotones, which are a region of transition between two biological communities, something that humans have created an unprecedented amount of. The only string attached is if the humans can recognize and eliminate you within those ecotones, which cockroaches make very difficult because they naturally want to hide in small spaces. Number four, urbanization and housing in the 19th and 20th centuries. As human populations have increased, we've also had to create interconnected and large-scale housing, which created warm structures where cockroaches could migrate freely. Apartment buildings, especially older ones with shared plumbing and heating, can become vast, continuous cockroach colonies, or a single superhabitat. Basically, the principle is, the larger a home or network of homes becomes, the more difficult it becomes to both locate and eliminate the cockroach population. This is why cockroaches thrive in cities and poorly maintained communal living infrastructure. The more pipes, food, humidity, and heat, the better. And it can get pretty bad in terms of pest removal. A bad roach infestation is usually indicative of several other flaws within the building. But regardless, roach pest control for large buildings can get up into the millions, as these are extremely hardy animals. In addition, nighttime electricity means kitchens are often left warm and illuminated, keeping roaches active longer. Number five, electrical appliances in the 1900s. New machines like refrigerators, stoves, and dishwashers offer warm, dark crevices, ideal for hiding and breeding in, and laying eggs. This point is pretty broad, as electrical appliances come in many shapes and forms, but the ways they assist roaches is that they can protect food, supply consistent heat, 
and are often easy to hide in for long periods of time. The insides of many of these electronics is often designed to be a microhabitat of sorts to protect the internal hardware, essentially becoming a home within the home for the roach. Even when you thought you had eliminated all the hiding places, roaches are designed to sniff out and remember where the safe spaces are. So basically, roaches are adapted to living behind motors and compressors, thriving in what are effectively climate-controlled microhabitats. Number six, chemical industry and insecticide evolution in the 20th century. So obviously humans tried to fight back against the roaches, but in the past 100 years, we've made some key serious mistakes. Initially, DDT, chlordane, and other synthetic insecticides temporarily reduced roach numbers. But species like the German cockroach developed a rapid resistance because of their short generation times and general genetic adaptability. The industrial chemical warfare we inflicted upon them created super roaches, faster, stealthier, and immune to our poisons. In nature, cockroaches are constantly being exposed to a rotating arsenal of mild toxins, microbial pathogens, and chemical defenses from plants and fungi many of which are natural analogs to pesticides. But humans broke that balance by attacking them with a single, unchanging chemical, DDT, for years on end. That consistency gave the surviving few a perfect training ground to evolve resistance, because cockroaches breed fast and adapt across generations in months. Had we been a bit more wise and rotated between multiple compounds and managed our timing more patiently, we might have slowed their comeback, but our persistence with the same chemical only made them stronger. It's not enough that they thrive in our environments, but our very effort to eradicate them has actually made them better at being pests. It's a lesson that perhaps if the original habitat of a pest species is one that they actually do worse in, Maybe they'll already be prepared for our attempts to make life more difficult for them. Number seven, industrial food waste and garbage systems. The industrial food chain and urban waste systems created a permanent buffet for these insects. Trash compactors, dumpsters, alleyways, and food processing facilities are sprawling networks of food residue, all protected from predators. Even if a building is perfectly clean, the surrounding infrastructure can sustain cockroach populations indefinitely. Garbage collection systems and sewers essentially act as nutrient rivers that connect colonies throughout a city. It helps that the cockroach's reproduction is disjointed, meaning a roach can lay its uathika, which is a capsule full of cockroach eggs. Think of it as a sort of second egg around 40 other eggs designed to protect them. They can lay that just about anywhere, and if that ends up in a garbage pile, which it often does, then that little speck can remain undetected as it causes a population boom somewhere kilometers away. It also helps that cockroaches are hemimetabolous, meaning they have incomplete rather than complete metamorphosis. This means that they don't have a specialized larval or pupil stage, that is a grub, when they're born, they don't look like maggots or caterpillars. They look like tiny roaches, and these tiny roaches are very capable of locomotion and survival, just as the adult is. Not to mention that of the five most common pest cockroach species, three of them have retained their ability to fly, being the American, smoky brown, and oriental cockroaches. Indoor pest success depends on a species' ability to exploit warm, humid-rich, resource-rich microhabitats near humans. They need to be able to reproduce rapidly and tolerate confinement for extended periods of time. Only German and American cockroaches hit all of those criteria in a major way. The other three may enter home circumstantially, but never fully establish. The German and American cockroach success lies in their adaptability of environment selection, 
meaning they can pretty much set up shop wherever. And they've evolved to be this adaptable because of the chaos of their original environments, which were tropical from Southeast Asia and Africa respectively. In the tropics, food sources are patchy and ephemeral. Leaf litter, decaying wood, seeds, and other detritus can appear and disappear quickly, and so the cockroaches adapted to thrive in whatever circumstances were thrown at them. This is why the chaos and instability of human environments wasn't a very big hurdle to overcome. These insects were already more than ready to switch to what was basically an analogous oversaturation of chaotic and inconsistent resources. This all being said, some origins in cockroaches are hard to pin down, but the point remains that some natural settings mimic human settings in survival pressures. It took a moment because most of these roaches were first transitioning around 2000 years ago, but they were able to spread out after global trade became widespread. The environment these animals lived in previously, although not too similar to human homes in general, likely presented the same survival pressures. The wild is full of what are called microhabitats, which are small pockets where animals can thrive that are different in ecological consistency. For example, the fig wasp spends almost all of its life inside a fig, and the males of the species spend their entire lives inside the fig. This is a microhabitat that they've specialized to, as the fig tree gives them protection, and the fig wasp gives the fig tree pollination. Cockroaches have evolved to specialize in microhabitats, but not any one type. Just as they've evolved to not be very picky with what they eat, they're also not too picky with where they live. And the least picky are the German and American cockroach, which are also the worst pest species. Human adjacent microhabitats offer species like cockroaches, house spiders, centipedes, and silverfish refuge, depending on location and humidity, as well as warmth. The reason cockroaches stand out in this regard is because they are remarkably semi-nomadic. They don't mind living in the same place for as long as it suits them, or their children, or their children's children. But as soon as the food leaves, they leave. A strategy somewhat different from silverfish or earwigs. Cockroaches are perfectly designed for the odd binary mix of stability and chaos found within human habitation. It's a rare case where an insect is simply so flexible in diet, habitat choice, and behavior that it makes even human homes appear to be just another environment to conquer. Thanks for watching this episode of Privileged Bug Facts. Stay tuned for more content just like this. Thanks.